Here's a reservoir cap. Right, so this is the moment we've been waiting for. Got the keys ready to go. All right, I want to talk about like our orientation towards this project, right? Okay, so it was a lot of stuff so far. We're not done yet. And uh, you know, if let's say we turn this on and it doesn't work, guess what? It doesn't matter. We learned a lot. And uh, because we learned a lot, right, the knowledge is what we're going to use to apply forwards in our lives with other things that we're trying to work on. So it's important to change your orientation towards failure or potential failure and look at it as something as you did something that probably no other person would have tried. Very few mechanics will try to do this, let alone very few people will try to do this curbside or weekend warriors or tree, shade tree mechanics, right? But uh, I gave you all the information I, I found. I read two repair manuals on this and studied some people's work on YouTube, read a couple forums, asked s several questions, and this is where we are now. So we're gonna turn this on. We're gonna give it a try and see what happens. I'm gonna leave you in this position so you can take a look and uh, let's have at it. I'm gonna go on the inside and uh, wish for the best. Actually, we're not gonna turn it on, I'm sorry. We're gonna check the oil pressure. So remember that fuse? That's for the fuel pump. That's a 15 amp fuse, I think. Yeah, I think so. All right, so we want to check and see if the oil pressure light's gonna be, uh, if it'll turn itself off. So to do that, we're just gonna turn it on. Looking for the, oh, oh, Jesus, what have I done? So I obviously hit the uh, windshield wiper. Okay, all right, that's better. All right, we're looking for oil pressure to go out. So we want that light to go out. I'm sorry, uh, here's the oil pressure light. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna crank it. I don't see the oil pressure indicator on anywhere. So that's a good sign. All right, so the engine turns. We have no issues. All right, so what we're gonna do now, right? I just cranked it over, I don't see any oil. Oil lights on, oil pressure lights on, so we should be good to put the fuel pump fuse in and then actually turn it on. Yeah, let's do that. So it's going to be this 15 amp fuse and that is down here, up there, that slot. Uh, I don't know which one because it's been a while, so we'll have to read about it. So I'm at this website called Fuse um, Fuse Box Info, and uh, position number two, right? Position number two, 15 amp fuel pump, right? So if you look at this, this is the inside. Look at the orientation: the 34, 35, 36, 37 at the very top. Right? And you can see if you look up here. So we are going to place this fuse all the way over here. Oops, sorry. We're gonna put, place that fuse all the way on the bottom, bottom row right there. Okay, so. Right there. That's where we're placing it. Right. So there you go, right there. That is gonna be, come on. There you go, that's better. That's fuse number two, the 15 amp that we just put in. All right, you get to be the best 
position to see how this is going to go. Place your bets. We did it. Good run. Little squeaky belt over there. Um, not sure why. We have some burn off happening back there because of some, you know, obvious oil. Yeah. All right, we did it. Let it run for a little bit. Watch the RPM. See if we have any leakage underneath. And, uh, yeah, we're good to go. Two minutes later, the RPMs have dropped a lot. Moving in the right direction. Smoking is getting less. So, so far so good. We're gonna, uh, check and see, uh, we just monitor the engine temperature for a little bit. See so if we get the thermostat to kick on. There you go, you just saw some of it. There we go, there's some more. Alright, there you go, that's more right there. That's air that's trapped inside of the cooling system. Pretty cool. Got a lot of oil. That's the uh, motor oil that was in the system itself when it was uh, at the blown gasket. So we're super low in gas, so I don't know if I'll be able to make it for too long, but because uh, I'm just, I gotta watch the uh, engine coolant here temperature and see, that's at the very bottom, see what we end up with. But uh, we're right, <laughs> we have no more gas, you know? So I don't know how long we can get this thing to idle before I have to go buy some gas in my container. It's interesting, there's no check engine light. That's good. All right, that's very good. I didn't even clear anything. The computer just did its own diagnostics and uh, found nothing wrong so far. All right, so we got the engine, you know, warm <laughs> and uh, like operational temperature warm, at least close enough. So we need to change this uh, power steering fluid, and this is our drain plug for it. So I think this is probably just a square drive. Yeah, it sure is a 3 8 square drive. And yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, might need a little something, something. Yeah, maybe, maybe a longer three eighths. Let's see. This is the one that broke. The one that I really don't like. is a really really amazing thing all right let's see I have a weird feeling that that washer probably needs to be replaced yeah lucky for you I might have one all right so we'll let that drain Oops. camera down we'll let that you can see here, ah, the drain plug, it's got a lot of crud on it, right? That's, uh, that's it just collecting metal particulates. So there's a magnet there. These are all strategies to try to help prolong your, uh, and protect your system. So, I'm going to clean that off. And 
there, there is a service interval for this, an automatic transmission, but I'm not really sure what the interval is. Maybe I'll flash it on the screen. But uh, you should do this. You really should drain this fluid. So that's what came out of the uh, coolant drain the first time around. I'm only going to do one. I thought I'd do two, but I only, I only really need to do one. This got pretty clear at the end. And then we're going to replace it with this coolant. Acing. That's a 50-50. It's already got the water. I mean, it's already mixed. So no need to add any water. So that's what we're going to use for a coolant. Put a link in the description. Uh, we're going to um, add some automatic transmission sealing, sealer and conditioner. And then we're going to use Type H+. Plus. Adamitsu ATF. And this, I believe, when we drain it like this, it, I think it calls for about two and a half uh, quarts. So we have three, three quarts, and it should be enough for the transmission. And uh, to fill the transmission, uh, we're gonna just pour it right down inside of that, uh, inside of there, where the dipstick is, okay? So I took this out, washed it out with water, so it was clean, and we got our funnel stuck down there where the, uh, dipstick was. We're gonna go ahead and pour some, uh, ATF. Let's see how much of a mess we can avoid. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with uh, one and a half quarts and measure the dipstick, see where we are, and continue to fill it up. The coolant, you already saw me do that. It's the same thing before. Turn on the engine, let it idle, watch for the bubbles, watch till the bubbles stop, and then uh, try to let it run until the uh, thermostat opens up. Okay? So we had to put this battery back. The tray, that is, properly. Yes, that feels good. It's got two holes in it that keys it. So we're gonna put two hooks on there. Like you really should take, take some time to uh, clean these off inside of here. Because we have all kinds of battery uh looks like Acid is built up. We'll clean it off later. Um, all right, so leave the negative off for now. Just gonna hook that on. I'm gonna hook this on. We still have to figure out the parasitic draw on this, so that's gonna be a separate video. And uh, hopefully. That'll be something pretty involved. So, leave the negative off for now. Just gonna hook that on. I'm gonna hook this on. We still have to figure out the parasitic draw on this. So that's gonna be a separate video. And uh, hopefully, That'll be something pretty involved. But I don't think so. The electrical system on this car is pretty simple, you know? So. So 
that's that. not going anywhere. That goes on top of that. Now let's put our terminals on. Weather's kind of weird. It's like sunny and raining at the same time, you know? These are all 10 millimeters. Okay. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. All right. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before, which was uh, run it, idle it, get it up to temperature, and then uh, we'll uh, actually, you know, let's connect some other stuff down below. We got to get this bracket back on. This is going to be a filter for uh, a trans. I think this is the yeah transmission fluid. Uh, this doesn't seem to have an interval for a replacement. But if you feel like you want to be extra thorough, you can go ahead and replace that filter if you want. I know you definitely should do it if you have a new engine that you've installed. But this is not a new engine or a new transmission. Uh, if you have a new transmission, you definitely got to do it. Alright. Okay, so that's that. Okay. So we have uh, <clears throat> four bolts. I lost one, but I found it. I mean, I went to the junkyard and get it, got it. So we have uh, that hole there. Blah, 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 blah. All right, so my demonetizing soundtrack to life is gone. So this right here, you see it? That and here. Okay, so we're gonna put uh, those bolts in. They look like, uh, you know, you saw me take them out, right? Yeah, they look like this. So. Yeah, that one fell all the way through. Lucky me. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna put that in. There's two here and there's two on the other side. I want to show you something about this bottom bolt here. Uh, this bolt. That bolt there is a real pain in... So to get at it, right, you gotta go like this. Put a piece of paper with the bolt in it. Universal socket, right? Then you stick your extension right through here, like this. Okay, and you stick your extension through, go over on this side, and then attach this with the bolt onto it. Okay, and uh, that's how you got to get that on so you can, because it's, it's too hard. <laughs> uh, unless you have a small little Vietnamese friend, I don't know how you're going to get your hand in there and try to maneuver that thing. Okay, so do it that way. So here's the driver's side. That's the... Uh, one and there's the other one with the paper still stuck to it. That one was really particularly difficult to get at. I had to like lift the radiator up like this, get the uh, aligned, stuck it through here, like I said, like I showed you. Do that with the extension of Universal, it'll, you can get it on. I guess the next thing we're going to do is uh, these brackets right here. See them? So just like this. I'm going to unscrew those, unscrew those, and slide these brackets in there. So 
so there's this bracket over here, right? <clears throat> and uh, it goes like this. It goes under here. This is going to fight a little bit. Just want to give you a better idea of what we're dealing with here. So you got to kind of push down. Yeah, push down to get those bolts lined up. Okay. So it's a little hard to do. Take your time. You'll get it. Those two. And there's another one right here. But I think something else goes on top of that. So, because I see threads here, so something, something else I think screws in through here onto there. So notice something about these bolts. <clears throat> these two with the washers are going to be the ones that are going to be right here against this, and then the one without the washer is going to go down through here onto something. Something goes through it, but I'm not really sure yet. So this uh, harness here right, has these clips. One, two, three, four, five. This one survived. Well, we gotta replace them all, right? And they will clip on to here. So if you look underneath, you can see. Uh, maybe you can't. I don't know. There are some lights. You can see where they clip onto. So we're going to have to replace them and then clip them on. Okay. So we got all of our new zip ties on here. Go here, another one. There's one more here, but that's going to become optional. Too hard to get at, so clip these off. Anybody else have a fear that you're going to snip stuff like this one day and you're going to snip off a wire? Yeah, I, like I have nightmares about that. Okay, so then now, should be able to kind of just... Press that in. Press that in. So we got the uh, under splash guard wheel well shield put back on. We got a new one here. That's what it looks like. All right. So you can see it sits on top. All right. And then this goes on top of it. This goes on top of it like that. That's the access hole for the crank bolt. Uh, I do recommend when you do this job, get new body fasteners. This one right here to hold that. This one right here. Bring it down. And we're gonna go back here. The really big, thick Christmas tree fasteners go in here, one there. This slides right on the inside. There's a little tongue right here. Slides into this. Okay. 
can't mess that up. Come around here. You have to take this wheel off on the driver's side. See, it's loose. Okay. And that's what that looks like. That goes there, that goes here. This is on top of the wheel well. Okay. This got chewed out already because it wasn't properly fastened. All right, and that's it. That's the splash guard and the undershield. Let's go on this uh, maiden voyage, shall we? All right, the brakes work. That's good. I'm not gonna go too far because I just need to get some gas and do a little wearing in of the engine, check and see what other kind of weird stuff might be going on, like how bad is the alignment now because, you know, I messed with the subframe. scratchy sounding because the brakes are, well, you know, rusty. I haven't been, uh, used in a while, but it does stop, so that's a good thing. Uh, AC compressor, we need to figure that out. You know, I don't really like that loud wobble sound when I slow down. I'll bring you back when anything exciting happens. If you made it this far, this is all the stuff that we replaced. <laughs> we got a lot, a lot of parts. You know, these are all from the piston here. Remember this? It's kind of like stripped out oil drain plug, time and chain guides, tensioner. Watch oh, those, the uh, paper clip in it. Good. Uh, this I broke, so I had to replace this. Um, I guess it's a variable valve timing solenoid. So I broke one of those, I had to replace that. That was a fiasco. Um, parts of the, what do you call it? Um, spark plug boot, uh, spark plug chamber, uh, valve cover. Failed head gasket, exhaust, intake, gaskets, time and chain. Uh, yeah, we also, yeah, I mean, that's it. We did a lot of stuff. Most importantly, was this. Okay. 
You saw me pull this apart, right? Or at least try to and put it back together. Warning. Leave it alone. Just don't don't try to pull it apart. Uh, this thing failed catastrophically on the highway about the second day I was driving and leaked all the oil out of the engine. And uh, I had to get off the highway real quick and uh, it threw me into limp mode. I barely got home and I was more happy I didn't damage the engine because it had less than a quart of oil in it. I wasn't driving for long, but either way, you can't have a four-cylinder 4.9 quart engine with one quart or less in it. You're gonna it, danger. It's it's inevitable. Inevitable. You're gonna damage the engine. Leave this alone. When in doubt, just replace that filter, here. and uh, you can put the whole thing in the ultrasonic cleaner if you want. But don't try to pull it apart and pull the solenoid out. You can test it, see if the solenoid moves. You know, apply voltage here, look down in here, and see if it moves. But other than that, if you have any doubts and you want to be thorough, just buy a new one. They're like $90, I think, or $110. Uh, we have a new AC compressor. That compressor was shot. I didn't need to test it. I just threw the part at it, and it delivered. It had issues because I could listen to the... I, I extensively interviewed the, uh, the owner, and uh, I can tell that uh, this was probably... A, this had failed, so so I just got a new one and I installed it. These are the head bolts that didn't fit. We got to replace these. I mean, send them back. So, yeah. Anyway, for you, this is just hours later. For me, it's been about like two and a half months to get this project completed. I worked on it on the weekends. After, uh, uh, yeah, on well, my Friday and Saturday. Sometimes Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but. Definitely Saturday and Sunday, and it you know took one day off, two days off out of work just to get a nice solid four days in on it. And uh, for you, this is just hours later. Uh, most importantly, um, this project you know I usually do these projects because guess what they're hard, right? Not a lot of people want to do a head gasket job or let alone rebuild an engine partially. Well, I do. I like hard stuff, and hard things make you better. Better as a person, better a character, better a skill set, just improves you as a person. And uh, that's why I did it, primarily. You know, I wanted to see if I can pull it off. I've done head gaskets now on, like, four other cars. So this would be, yeah, this would be three other cars. This would be my fourth. And uh, for the most part, it's meticulous. You would take your time, for sure, and be very thorough, document things. Uh, modern day has allowed for that to be quite easy with the cameras and you know, digital photography. So I would say this is the most important video in the series. If you're gonna start with any video, you should start with this video, the last video, because the video itself, this, 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 this preamble I'm giving you here is uh, outlies all the weird stuff I encountered before. You know, so watch the video in totality because I ran into some weird problems that I didn't anticipate, and you will make those pro you'll make those mistakes if you don't watch the whole all of the, the entire series, so you can see how I adjust each time. You know, in life you're going to fail, but what's most important is how well you recover. Uh, the car runs, so I recovered well. Uh, I can say that uh, this car is for sale, so if you want to purchase this car, reach out to me. Let me know. And uh, other than that, thanks for hanging out. Looking forward to uh, doing another head gasket for something else. I'm working on something, but uh, I haven't had any, haven't had any contact yet with the with the owner. So until then, I'll see you when I see you. We have a couple things to fix with this car still. We have a a blend door that doesn't uh, blend, so I'm gonna figure that out. I'm making a video about that and. Uh, so far, I've failed with the diagnosis that uh, that, the, that the repair manual recommends. So we're gonna have to do it my way. And then I have some weird issues with the rear defrost. I don't. I'm not getting any power to the to the the, the lines in the back that, that heats up to, to get rid of the fog. At least I think so. I'm not really sure. It doesn't look like I am. Well, either way, those are the two things left. And then I have to just double check and see if I have a parasitic draw. I don't know for sure because nothing has drawn the battery down. It's always functioned well. But we'll double check and see. And uh, we'll 
we'll go on that little journey together. All right, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time. And uh, remember, these things are easy. Save these vehicles. Save the environment. You can do it because I did it. I'm not special. And I did all the work to help document this process for you. So give it a try and save as many cars as you can from the junkyard and crushers because there's lots of them out there that can be saved just because of this head gasket failure. I'll talk to you later. Bye.